Drupal. We have these two wonderful students. I'm nobody. I'm an old guy in Drupal. I've been around Drupal.org over 10 years. Don't worry about me. This is the future right here. And why am I talking to you? Well, you'll, you'll find out in a little bit here. Uh, we we kind of tricked you guys. Uh, you want to learn about social API, but we're really actually just going to talk about Google Summer of Code and Google Code in. No, I, I'm just kidding. That I hooked you guys. And as we all know in Drupal 8, no more hooks. All right, so here I am. I'm from USA, Drupal.org, over 10 years. If anybody's ever been to Chicago, you may have seen me over the years. I founded the uh, community out there, organized over 100 events, Drupal training days, organized the first several camps. Uh, now it's mid-camp and everything, but if you've been to Chicago, that probably seen me around. That's how I started out contributing to Drupal, organizing events, community leader type stuff. And then I eventually got into mentoring and organizing the Google Summer of Code and the Code-In programs. That's uh, a big part of my life. I, I do do Drupal development, really big projects. I'm on the forefront of Drupal 8. But what I do for my time to contribute back to the community is organizing and mentoring students. And I like skateboarding and music. And if anybody's into fish, there's a little quote. We are everywhere. Google Summer of Code. Has anybody ever seen those nicknames before? You may have heard of WebChick. Classy slash Alex UA, and of course at the bottom there we have G GVSO. These are all students who went through GCI and GSOC. Webchick got her start in Google Summer of Code, and if you don't know who Webchick is, she's one of the top people in the entire Drupal community. And as I keep mentioning, that because of these programs, this is kind of the, the the future of Drupal. All right, let's get into the real presentation here. We we uh, the social API was built by GSOC students, and that's why we're kind of sneaking in the story of Google Summer of Code and Code and how this came in. We're actually going to really talk about all this. What is the social API? Why are you here? Why do you care? What do you want to learn? If any of you have a Drupal website and you need to interact with any of these social networks, authentication, posting, you can already do that in Drupal 8 because of these guys. Oh, we'll, we'll get one more. Just uh, before I get too far into this, I just want to thank the Drupal Association for putting on a good event. They really help us out. They're also a, our fiscal sponsor for the sum, Summer of Code. Google gives us lots of money. The DA manages it, helps do cool things like bring these students out to DrupalCon and do presentations. So thank you to them. This has been a great event. And uh, one more cool thing while I brag. If anybody's ever looked at drupal.org forward slash organizations, it lists all the top contributing organizations to Drupal, like who, who are the companies contributing the most code and everything. And over the past couple of years, because of us, we've, we've been in the top 50. I think GSOC's in the top 30. So you see all these big companies that are sponsoring Drupal. They're here spending a lot of money. But it's not only those people contributing this awesome code. A lot of it's high school and college students. And I'll, again, I'm just kind of the MC here. Now we're really going to get into it with the fun stuff with the actual students. Hello everyone, um, I'm Valentin Sanchez, I'm from Paraguay. I'm currently studying computer science and political science at Swarthmore College, Liberal Arts, computer science, political science. Um, I was a Google Coding 2014 Grand Prize winner. I did GSOC in 2016. I now mentor in both programs. I like to play soccer, ping pong, and, but, but my favorite sport is to, like, is to ask government organizations for open data. And I really like it when data is under arrest, uh, and not under arrest. Uh, how I got into Drupal? Um, I got into Drupal thanks to Sugar Labs, basically. Uh, I, got an, I got an email from a mentor in, for GCI 2013, back in 2013. I registered for the competition. I wanted to complete tasks, but there was a technical issue, and that was English. <laughs> I didn't know how to speak English back then, and I didn't understand anything that was going on. Uh, so the next year, I decided, I, I told myself, I'm going to learn English, and I'm going to finish at least three tasks next year in 2014. Because the rule is, if you finish three tasks, Google will give you a t-shirt. And who doesn't want a Google t-shirt? Especially if you are a June teenager who is an nerd and like computers. You just want to go to your high school and like, oh, look at my Google t-shirt. Uh, is this very cool? Am I cool? Uh, so I, dis I, I completed the first three tasks, but something amazing happened, and that is that my first patch was committed, 
And it was very exciting to know that someone else in the world would be using code that you wrote. And I got excited about the competition and I started working more and more on it. And at the end of the competition, I ported like seven modules from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, including a scroll to top, uh, minister users, users by, ro by role, uh, blog title link, and all these modules. Uh, and how old and were you when you did that? I was 17 years old when I did that. Uh, I started with GCI, and then I got to this, I contributed patches to core, to Drupal core. And then in 2016, I did GSOC, uh, Google Summer of Code, and I work on, on a project called the Social API. Of course, that is the title of the presentation. Uh, uh, and it's a project to harmonize authentication and auto-posting tasks with external providers, such as Facebook, Google, Twitter, LinkedIn, PayPal, all of, all of these providers. And I like to think that Social API exists only because I wanted a t-shirt four years ago. And this is how my closet looks like right now. <laughs> um, it's not because I am a big fan of Google, it's just because I don't like spending money on clothes. Uh, but let's get to business, let's get to social API. What is it? Uh, but before talking about social API, I don't wanna bore you with, with all in talking, I wanna show you the code. You can get it in drupal.org project slash social API or you can just type it on Google Social API Drupal, and probably the first link, I hope. Uh, and I want to start with a background idea, the project idea. I was working on a, on a project and I wanted to connect users, I wanted to log in users using Google and Facebook, and Facebook, and the problem was that there were many modules that, was, that were doing the same thing with different providers. I, have, I had a module that was doing that for Facebook, another one that was doing that for Google, but they were completely incompatible. If you wanted to log in users and, ask, and, ask, and, and link accounts from Google and Facebook, you couldn't do it because they were different modules, there are not a common ground, there is not an API going on. And it was a big problem because uh, they were working differently you have to configure this module. That this module works completely different. One of them were, was using the email address. The other one was using the user ID, and that was like very confusing. And also, that contributed that 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 problem contributes to the idea that Drupal is hard to use. And I didn't like that. It was like no way. There should be an easier way to connect to other providers like Facebook and Google without going through all these steps. So. I did an intensive research. I went to google.com, typed my question, and clicked on the first link. Uh, and the first link was about the Drupal Social Initiative. And these guys were created, I mean, they created this group like in 2012, and they had all this idea of creating authentication with a common API, auto-posting, all of these cool things that I was thinking about. I was not alone. But there was, there was a small problem with this with this project, and that was that they didn't write any single line of code during those four years. And I don't know if you agree with me, but I believe that code is important in a software development project, uh, isn't it? So I contacted Daniel, who, who was one of, one of the most active members in the group, and he agreed to mentor. The problem was that even though Daniel is, is great, he was more a project manager than a software developer. So I needed a new mentor that was, an, another mentor who was more, not, that knows more about Drupal in terms of development. And I found out about Matteo, who is one, who is a maintainer of these cool modules such as OAuth 2 and a, a JSON API. But I contacted him because he was, work, he was the maintainer of Facebook Autopost, which was similar to what I wanted to do. So I contacted him and he agreed to mentor but the main contribution of Matteo in this project was not that he only mentored the project, but, but it was that he was working on something called social autopost. It was similar to what I wanted to build, but only for autoposting. And the truth is that most of the social API core is based on this initial work by Matteo, who was social autopost. So that's really amazing. 
And during this, this talk, I, we divided the project in two phases. In the first phase, uh, we work on developing the base code and on developing the core for social API, social auth, and social posts. I will show you what's the difference between these modules later. And something called social widgets, which is not very well known, but if someone wanna work on it, we can make it work as well. And then during phase two, I developed uh, a bunch of implementers. Implementers are, uh, pro are, are modules that work on top of these projects and allow you to connect to Facebook, Google, and any other, any other services that you want to. And we improve and make the API more generic during the process. And this is how, how this is the basic architecture architecture that, that we work on. And you can you can consider each 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 rectangle to be a different module. And we we have Drupal on the bottom. And then on top of Drupal, we are running social API. And on top of the social API, we have social auth and social post. Uh, which are like basically the core of all of these projects. They work independently of each other, you don't need one for the other. And on top of social auth, you have social auth Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, and much more. There are like 25 right now. And on top of social posts, you have the same thing. You have social posts Twitter, LinkedIn, Slack, Facebook, and hopefully much more in the near future. And these were the key features that we work on. Naturally, I like to consider then the philosophy of the project. Uh, we, we work on making it protocol and library agnostic. We didn't want to depend on any protocol. We wanted to be, to, we wanted the social API to work with OAuth2, OAuth1, how, uh, and whatever library you wanna use. After all, it's just HTTP, so it shouldn't depend on anything. Even though right now it's using uh, PHP the leak as a default library is not dependent on that. You can build a social API implementer without using that library. And also we wanted to create a common API code and functionality because that was a problem we were addressing. And this allows, allows people to, if I know how to connect with Facebook, I can do it with Google, I can do it with LinkedIn, I can do it with PayPal. It should be the same everywhere. I should already know how to do them if I know how to do one of them. And also, we wanted to make it easy to contribute to, to it. In fact, GCI students developed new implementers in one day, like in five or seven hours, using basic and elemental software development skills like copy and pasting code and changing names. Uh, so it's, I can assure you that it's very easy to develop new implementers for other services. Is that, are you talking about Masky? The Amaski developed uh, social auth Amazon, and another student developed social auth link, uh, Twitter two years ago. And that, these are GCI, these are high school students. And these are high school students working during GCI, doing these things in one day. So it's very, very cool. But I want to show you a, a presentation on one of the projects I work on. This is actually the data version up to date. This social post Twitter. Well, I already installed the, the, the I already installed the module by, by for this presentation, and then you can go to the configuration. You go to in this case Twitter. Oh, that wasn't. Go to Twitter, and then. From Twitter, from the Twitter app, we just copy the API key and the API secret into the settings. Just save that. Now you can go into configuration. There is, you, can, you can use the API alone and just code it if you want, but you can also use rules, which is like very cool uh, modules to react to events on Drupal. So I just use rules in this example. Just go to rules and then you can add a new reaction rule one that's called tweet, and then I added an action that I, after saving new content, I'm gonna tweet something. Uh, and then you go into add action, and there's an action that is tweet, which is, which, which is uh, created by social post Twitter. And then after creating the, the action, 
you type what you want to tweet. In this case, I want to tweet like this is a post with title and the title of the post that I'm of the, of the note that I'm on, I, I, that I am posting for Drupal code. And then I save this, I save this, and I save the rule action, and I can just go to my account. This is my username, my user. So I can just scroll down to my to to the lead form. And I can add accounts. I can add multiple accounts. I can add three or four accounts if I want. I will just add one. I authorize Twitter. And then I go back. Yeah, that's the account that was linked to my, to my username. <coughs> now, anytime I, I add a content on my site, like social post Twitter, that's the title. Then load it, I just add in a body and then saving the post. Cool, it was great now. Now if I go to my Twitter account, I have the post there. Cool, yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> That was easy, you didn't write any single line of code. And the idea is that you can do that with Facebook, Slack, or anything else that you, that you wanna work on. And I'm going to introduce you to Himanchu. He improved the Social API 1.x version, and he created more of my, almost all the implementers that we now support. So, Himanchu, it's your turn. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Himanchu Dixit. I'm from India. I'm currently a 19-year-old software developer. And I've been coding since the age of 12, so like uh, seven years into coding. I'm currently studying computer science engineering from Rajasthan Technical University, which is in Jaipur, like uh, Northern India. I've been involved with three open source organizations in total. Uh, my first contribution was to WordPress, where I uploaded my personal project. I wanted a functionality, I couldn't find it, and then I created it and uploaded it. And then uh, I got involved, uh, I wanted to participate in GSOC 2016, then uh, due to that I got involved with Opia, after that, uh, I got involved uh, with Drupal uh, as a part of my GSOC 2017 project. Okay. Uh, apart from that, I love to play squash, uh, badminton, and ping pong, so all the racket sports. Currently, I have co-founded a startup in India, uh, which is converting a workspace solution uh, from underutilized spaces to office solutions. So this is uh, about me. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a guy asked, uh, I have a Google Plus, Facebook, and Skype account. The other person asks, when do you have life? He says, can you send me a link to that? Uh, so, so social network has become a very important part of life, and uh, at Social API, we are trying to do the same you know, by integrating social auth uh, authentication and posting uh, in Drupal websites. Uh, so I wrote a proposal for my GSOC. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, as a part of GCI 2016, my brother participated in uh, with Drupal, he created social on Twitter uh, and became a green, uh, grand prize winner. So he inspired me to become, uh, uh, to participate in GSOC with Drupal in 2017. Also like my previous experience with uh, PHP and uh, integrating a social auth, uh, like authentication uh, for different uh, social providers like Facebook and uh, Google in uh, front end application helped me. I became a core contributor with Drupal by completing 13 core issues. After that, I started writing my proposal where Valentin and Matthew helped me refine the proposal and set the uh, milestones for the project. Uh, so really thank you to you guys. Yeah, uh, here's, a, here's a quick note. Um, all of the GSOC students that we've selected the past three years have all become core contributors prior to us selecting them to be even students. Just a cool little note out there. There are students that are so into becoming these students like these guys, they're already doing core contribution patches, writing their own modules, and then doing their projects. So we're, we're selecting pretty smart students. And again, we'll, we'll talk about this more if anybody wants to get involved with this. We have another summer of code coming up here shortly. After that, I set up my Drupal website and contributed to Social API to learn about the project and get involved with it. And also ported a project from uh, Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, uh, which was basically sharing buttons for Drupal websites. So like uh, uh, you can see the uh, buttons like share on Facebook and share on Google. So I ported it from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. It was one of the more due. 
about the development process uh, till 2016, uh, GSOC was basically uh, divided into two phases, uh, phase one and phase two. After that, they uh, uh, converted into three phases. Before the, uh, our development process start, we usually have a, a thing called community bonding period where you interact with other students and learn more about the uh, open source organization you are contributing to. So doing that, I learned the basic things like uh, creating an entity, et cetera. Uh, in phase one, I integrated the PHP League of Two library uh, in Social API by making it a compulsory uh, de dependency that must be used uh, in social auth and social post. I improved the user authentication flow, which we'll be talking about later in this presentation, and encrypted the access token stored by the social post. In the phase two, I updated the existing implementers created by Valentin, which were social auth uh, Google, social auth Facebook, and added new imp uh, implementers like uh, social auth uh, Instagram, social auth GitHub, etc. In phase three, I created social post LinkedIn. So uh, as uh, Valentin showed you the demo of social post Twitter, you could do the same with uh, social post LinkedIn. Added more implementers, so the, all the images that you saw earlier were created by me. Uh, wrote the documentation for social auth base implementers and social post implementers. So if anyone wants to create their own implementer, they can go ahead and like follow, uh, just uh, uh, see the code and like, create uh, their own implementer. After, uh, during the uh, development process, one thing that helped uh, us was uh, Scrum that was implemented by uh, Matthew. Is it, who, who's ever heard of Scrum, project manager? All right, I told you, this is a real, they didn't believe me. They thought I was crazy when I started making them do Scrums. You are still hard. So but do, do, uh, here, last we'll question. When you started doing Scrums, every student says, I don't want to do this. I don't want to check in and give you a report and all this stuff every day. But now that you're done with it, does it make sense? Yeah. It gave us yes. like a real life experience and like getting yeah, like, more on that yeah. project. Uh, 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 so one of the thing, uh, uh, main goal of my pro project was to implement the league over to library. Uh, we did want to uh, like implement uh, any library that can uh, easily implement, uh, can be easily be extended across all the implementers. But uh, uh, there was like hybrid auth, but it's what, it was like discontinued and not actively maintained. So we went to like league over to library. Uh, well, some of the features of League Over to Library are that they provide common abstract method for uh, all the different uh, all the social networks. So, like uh, you could easily go ahead and create implement library ex, uh, third party libraries for that. Uh, the packages uh, of League Over to Library are thoroughly tested and follow the modern coding standards. And uh, there's like long list of social network libraries uh, for PHP uh, in the PHP League Library. Here, I'm um, going to go back to that slide. Um, just so that anybody that doesn't know, the PHP League is kind of like an organization. Yeah, it's an, it's an organization that developed a lot of libraries, not only for auth to, uh, auth to authentication, they developed many other things. And Any, anything common in Drupal or in PHP, like a CSV uploader, authentication. There's groups of people in PHP outside of Drupal that are saying, hey, if we're going to do the same common thing, let's do it together and collaborate so we're not all redoing the same work and that's what the PHP league is and where we got the uh, like of uh, core libraries for the authentication stuff and applied it to Drupal of course apart from that some of the changes uh, done by me in JSOC were uh, before uh, uh, JSOC 2017 we did not have like any entities uh, so I created uh, universal entities for social auth and social post implementers uh, uh, we were ex uh, storing the access token for the user so every time users log in uh, we are uh, like storing the access token, which can be uh, used further to perform actions on his behalf, and encrypting the token stored uh, by social post. And other thing uh, we added uh, as a part of my project was we were uh, uh, having uh, we could collect like extra data during the time of authentication. So, for example, if anyone is logging from social po or uh, so, uh, Facebook, uh, we could collect like a, you could define scopes and like data you want to collect like his friend list, uh, what type of music uh, does he like, etc. Thing. Uh, and I improved the user authentication flow. Uh, so securing the uh, access token uh, works like, uh, first we encode the uh, token into JSON and then encrypt it using a OpenSSL library, using a salt and key, and then store it uh, in the database. And same uh, applies with the gate token uh, method, but it is in the reverse uh, way. So user authentication flow. Uh, so it was like big image, but we had to split it into two parts. So one is uh, when user is logged in, uh, if like uh, already uh, record for the same user, user exists, then we don't do anything. Otherwise, we associate uh, uh, that uh, social provider account with uh, Drupal user account. 
And then if user is not logged in, we first check uh, if there exists a user record in our sushiloth entity. If yes, then we log, log, the user, uh, log in the user. If no, then we check for if uh, an email can be obtained from the user. If uh, yes, then uh, we ch uh, check email address in our user uh, social authenticity and get the user ID and then log his, uh, logs him in. Otherwise, we ask a user to fill other details like uh, his uh, email and all. So, and securing the access token. So earlier, uh, the token was stored in like plain uh, format. So if uh, a website get reached, uh, the hacker will access to your all the user uh, access token and he could perform any action of, on your behalf like posting on Facebook, etc. So but during the one of our scrum meeting, uh, a question uh, was, there, uh, was there that we need to encrypt the token. So I used OpenSSL encrypt and uh, with a salt defined in settings.php uh, to encrypt the token. So uh, uh, the salt is unique to every Drupal installation, so encryption uh, is actually unique to every uh, Drupal installation. Apart from that, uh, in OpenSSL open encrypt, we use an initialization, uh, initialization vector, which is a suffix added to encrypted script, uh, which adds a more uh, layer of security. And here is the image of uh, uh, how normal encryption and decryption uh, works. So our data is encrypted using a uh, key, and the same key is required to decrypt the data. This is like a demo of social at Facebook, which I created my, as a part of my GSR project. So, You have to go to the settings page, uh, enter all the application ID and app secret, which you can obtain from a Facebook developer account. So here the same. And you have to also enter like uh, your privacy policy URL, you can, uh, and redirect URL, you can get it from it. Apart from that, we have like advanced settings, so you could define what type of uh, data you could, uh, you could collect at the, when user is authenticating for the first time. And then you need to add a social block to your block layout, which uh, we'll be doing now. And voila, we are done. Uh, so um, now anyone can uh, use like a social auth uh, in their website. It is like really easy process <coughs> to follow. So that is it from my side. I'd like uh, now invite Matthew to come. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, guys. That was great. Uh, again, these are modules that are going to be on lots of Drupal 8 sites. If you're doing anything with auth, post, social, these modules are there, they work. These students built them, and there are more. It's not just students, other people have been starting to contribute from the community, which is one of the reasons why we want to do this presentation and why we're looking for more. We need some help with contributing social uh, post implementers, social auth implementers, the code refactoring. Do you want to mention something? Yeah, there are a lot of code that is being that is being used in social posts and social auth that can be go directly into social API. And that includes the token encryption that is being done for social posts, but not for social auth. And we can just reuse the same method and put it in something more common, like social API. And we need help with that. Uh, we also need documentation. The API has, has a lot of cool things that are not only about logging users in. You can use the API to do whatever you want to do with, with services, but this, this these cool features are not completely document documented, so we need help doing that. And in general, any ideas that you have, that will be like very helpful. And of course, and yeah, any ideas you guys have. And you can find us if you'd like to get involved. Uh, here's some links in the bottom right. Google Summer of Code on g.groups.drupal.org. That's our main place where we are, and you can find us. We're also on IRC and Drupal dash Google. And of course, the Code In website. And again, a little refresher the Code In is for high school students ages 13 to 17. They basically compete to do a bunch of small tasks, like create that logo or write a small module. 
he's really smart. He actually wrote like the scroll to top module for Drupal 8. Some students just create logos and stuff for us. But they compete to win a, cont- a, a trip to Google. And I picked the top two students, and they get a full trip to Google for a week with their parents. And both of these guys have gone on it. Did you have fun going to Google? Yeah, yeah, it's very fun. The food is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the actual website for Summer of Code is Summer of Code with Google, and that is for university students. You can be a PhD student if you want, you can be an undergrad, you can be a master's student, and Google will pay you to contribute to open source. Every summer we select about 10 projects, we're actually in the the selection process right now, so if you're interested in mentoring, it's not a full-time gig. it's, we put as many mentors on projects as possible to help these students. I mean, if we had the possibility of putting 10 mentors on a project to help these kids, just to test things, review things, project management type stuff, it, it all really helps. And that will, again, run this summer. Code in usually runs in the winter. And of course, if you'd like to continue this discussion with us, we have a birds of a feather set up. Uh, so here we are right now, then there's lunch and at 2.15 in room 102A, you can come and meet the real live uh, GSOC students and there will probably be some other uh, alumni mentors who will be there so you can meet them. Or, talk. If, or if you wanna talk about social API or any ideas that you have, yeah, you can come, they are welcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, we're trying to hybrid BOF. We'll, we'll be talking about social API, GSOC, GCI. If anybody's interested in any of this and wants to get involved, come talk to us, we'd love to meet you. If you're interested in just testing it or using it or contributing it to us, we're, we're very excited. All right, now we can open it up to questions. Uh, do you guys know the drill? You gotta come over to the mic and do that and get in line here and we'll do that. So really impressive stuff. You guys are yeah, knocking you. it out of the park. Thank you. Uh, so I've mentored through Google Summer of Code before. I work at a university. We really don't see as much interest in participating anymore in the US from yeah. students, like attracting them. Part of it is market forces and what Google pays for that. Part of it is the availability of internships. But is there something going on in other countries to promote this program that we're just not doing here at US universities? So like in India, it is like in India, it is massively popular uh, due to like two of the reasons. Uh, like a lot of students are contributing to open source. Apart from that, the stipend there is like a bit high compared to uh, on the relative scale uh, compared to US. So in US, like sixty-six thousand uh, dollars might not be much, but in India, like two uh, two four oh dollars are like a good amount of money any student can earn, which is like a much higher compared to other internships available in India. And you, you could put it in other perspective. Um, Google's GSOC students uh, get on average about $5,500 per project. If you go to school in Stanford and live in Silicon Valley, you could probably get a job at a startup for pretty good pay. But if you live in India, $5,500 is could pay for almost a year of school, right? Yeah. So the, uh, another not related question at all. So uh, you guys, are the League PHP libraries are all licensed as MIT which is great, but did you guys run into other libraries that you wanted to use in these projects that didn't meet with Drupal's kind of strict GPL um, requirements? We first analyzed about the hybrid auth, which is like supports more than only auth2, but the problem was that uh, hybrid auth was discontinued. People were not uh, actively maintaining it anymore. Uh, and that was, that was the other alternative. We also consider, I think it was from Symfony, there's like a Symfony social, but we decided to use uh, PHP the league because it's, it's a more active community and they are actually doing very cool stuff and they are more popular than the Symfony uh, social develop, the initiative, I think. Or that's, that's the reason we, ch- we chose uh, uh, the league over the other but, ones. So like Facebook's default license oh. for PHP is Apache 2, which we can use. So a lot of projects can only be installed via Composer and even then what you, the resulting code that you end up with is only GPL3 compatible. You guys didn't run into that at all with all of these? Uh, are you talking about the, 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 the official library from Facebook? Yeah, like Facebook's SDK library is licensed okay. as Apache uh, 2. 
Well, initially we were using social, uh, we were using, for version 1.x, we were using uh, the, the default library from Facebook mm -hmm. because you can basically use whatever library you want. But then since we migrated to the leak auth2, we decided to just use the official implementer from the leak instead of using the SDK from Facebook. Okay. This is a question from the other side. Um, a lot of the work that I do with my clients requires me to grab data from Facebook and Twitter and pull it onto the website. Do you guys have um, plans to implement that piece of the functionality too? Yeah, currently in the advanced, set, in the advanced, uh, in the advanced settings, you can set up which scopes you wanna get from, you wanna request during the authentication. And then you can also set up some, some endpoints that you wanna request, for instance, the user friend list. Mm -hmm. And those, those, those endpoints are stored in the database. However, if you need to do more complicated requests, you can use the API itself and write your own code. Or you can write your own uh, customized module to retrieve all this data and put it on your website. So you can do all of this if you want. Uh, what we wanted to do was to give developers like uh, a code to, to start with so they can request data and authenticate. But you can do whatever you want to do with, with, the, with the API. Gotcha, so the, the core functionality doesn't have any plans to grab, for example, posts or tweets and pull them back in and store them as entities. You can, you can actually pull data right now in storing the database, but you will have to write a, a custom module to actually retrieve it from the database and show it as you want. There are ideas going on about like giving an UI to actually display the data as you want, Yeah. but we haven't developed it yet. Gotcha, okay, thank you. Yeah, and that's uh, kind of one of the things I, I would like to see too is more management on this, on what happens when you start authenticating with multiple providers, they say, how do you select which avatar pulls in? You know, you have LinkedIn, Facebook, all that. I mean, you should, there should really be kind of a UI. Oh, I want my job title to come in from LinkedIn. I want my this picture. And then, of course, pulling in posts and pushing posts. But yeah, that's, we're all on this path. We'd, we'd love some help on it. And of course, we have another summer of code coming up. We'll get more done. In the winter, we have GCI students doing more. Uh, we, we're really excited about this. Any more questions? All right, well, we really hope you guys check this out. Again, this is all at socialapi on drupal.org. Here you go, and it's a collection of, this is, there's the actual social API, then the social auth, the social post, and you, know, you can figure out what they're for in different modules, different pages, and check it out. Go to drupal.org. These students have written wonderful documentation on how to do it. You guys have even created some videos on how to do a lot of this. And again, the, the documentation is so good. But, but how, was, how old is Maskey? 15, 16? Uh, he's 17. Yeah, he's, he's 17 he's, now? Um, Maskey was 15 when he developed the first, his implementer. Yeah, so I mean, it's, high school students can follow what these kids have done and write a little bit of code and are contributing modules to Drupal.org. And for a lot of people who are new to Drupal or want to contribute more, that, that contribution stuff seems a bit daunting. But this is evidence that it really isn't. If you just kind of look and read the documentation and follow along, the steps are there and anybody can get involved. Any final words, guys? Mm, I, don't, I don't have anything else to, to add. Do you have anything? No. Like, uh, <laughs> just you have like, any ideas. Uh, if we could expand, extend the project in any way, like, let us know. We, like, uh, we could like, discuss it and like, even implement that functionality in our project. Cool. All right, well, we're all set. Hope you guys... Uh, have a good DrupalCon, and uh, we'll be in the BOF room after lunch. If you want to come ask it, we'll be hanging out here if you have some questions, but we'll be there as well. Thank you very much.